That's right. I had everything. Ooh, ooh, bacon. Fuck, yes. <sighs> really should do something about that wall. Yeah, it'll be fine. I'm sure she'll realize you used the door this time. How long does it take to pick up a box of cereal anyway? Oh, g'day, mate. Well, look who decided to come out of their coma. How you feeling, buddy? Mate, I'm as happy as a box full of birds. I had a rip snorter of a kip. Run that by me again? I said I feel as fit as a Mally Bull. <laughs> okay. Oh, mate. Oh, is that bacon? Your blood's worth bottling. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Oh, oh, you're, you're after the bacon. Mate, my stomach must think my throat's cut. I'm so hungry I could eat the ass end out of a low-flying duck. Did you just eat that straight out of the pan? Wasn't that extremely hot? <laughs> no walking furries, mate. Are you feeling all right, man? I've been having a lot of trouble understanding you. No buts about it, mate. I feel bonzer. He was in that trance for a week. I hope this isn't a sign of brain damage. Oh god, you're not having a stroke, are you? Eh? Can you feel this? Oi, pull your head in, will ya? Mm. Speech is slurred. That's good. Uh... Look at me. Can you smell toast? Oh, fuck off. You're carrying on like a bloody pork chop. Listen, Cobber, this has been a fun chinwag, but like the April sun in Cuba, this is Dragon. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think my guts are on the fritz. Oh... I've got to go point Percy at the porcelain. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love dragon. G'day. G'day. And welcome to Into the Minds of Madness. I'm your host, Paul McQuarter. Sitting next to me is Mr. Chris Dicker. How are you, my friend? Oh, very, very well. I'm very happy. Yeah, I am too. This was a fun this was a fun movie oh, to watch. This is one of my favourites. This is I, I it was very entertaining. It's very a gem of the Ozploitation variety. And the movie we're talking about is Razorback. 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 Released Razorback. in what year, Chris? I believe it was eighty five. 85. Let me just confirm that. Oh, 84. 84, okay. 84, all right. And directed by? Russell Mulcahy. Russell Mulcahy. All right, what mm. can you tell me about him? Well, like, Russell Mulcahy, he, this is his first, like, full-length feature film. Like, this is his first time directing. But he came from a music video background. And that is pretty evident in this movie. Very evident. Like Very evident. It just looks like an 80s music video at times. It really does. It really does. And he's it's come from like Spandau Ballet and stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah, it's got that feel about it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it does. Um... Some of the set pieces are very, very 80s. Oh, yeah. We um, painted on effects. Yeah. The lightning. Painted on lightning. Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty wonderful. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> it, it was like a joy to watch. Yeah, it was. It was really was a joy to watch. Just soaking in the random lighting, like the pinks and the reds yep. and stuff. And, and there's always dust billowing around. Always. And always backlit. God, it's windy, but the it's hair crazy. doesn't really move too much. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so I guess let's kick off with a bit of a synopsis for Razorback. Yeah, let's. Um, a giant boar yes. is has killed the son of a man. The, the grandson. The grandson of a man. So yeah, the, the movie opens to you know some beautiful wide shots of you know a dusty you know outback you know farmhouse and all that. There's a windmill and such, and we see our our main uh, Jake Jake Cullen. Yeah, Jake Cullen putting Scotty. Scotty to bed. Scotty. Oh, Scotty, my boy. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. And there, um, there, Scotty. Come <laughs> on, boy. <laughs> and in a matter of less than a minute, the Razorback appears. Yep. Br- runs, charges at him, rip, breaks his leg, runs through multiple walls of the house, yep. rooms of the house. 
explodes out the other end. Yep, literally explodes. Yep, comes out running, sets the house aflame. Yep. Scotty! Oh, Scotty! Scotty's gone. Poor Jake is left to walk out of his burning building and, you know, fall to his knees cr- screaming, Scotty! Yeah, with some wonderful backlighting from the fire. Oh, yeah. It's it was, that was very 80s music video. Oh, very yeah. 80s music video. There's a m- couple of times where I'm just expecting there to be, like, a helicopter shot and um, Slash whipping out a soul <laughs> in front of the, of the church. Burning, outside of his burning house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like right next to him and then kicking up the dirt as he kicks it yeah. off too. Oh, yeah. I oh. like it. I like it. So um, <laughs> so that basically kind of gets things rolling and the movie is in parts mostly a revenge movie. It's Jake trying to... He, he's been accused of... Uh, charged with, you know, killing his grandson because it, he's... Son is no, his grandson's nowhere to be found. Well, I guess he doesn't. He doesn't really get charged though, does well, he? It, it yeah, go, he they go to trial. That's go to trial. Awesome. That's the next scene. Yeah, he gets discharged and yeah. let free because there's not enough evidence and all that. Yeah. And that's when then the movie changes, shifts a little bit. It cuts to New York, and we know we're in New York because there is a a, a, a man standing there with a boombox on his shoulder in a red Adidas jumpsuit, looking so happy to be there. Yeah, screaming New York. Yeah. I wonder if someone just, you know, call, Russell called up a mate in New York, said, yo, can you just film this one shot in the street? And we've got a set for the apartment. It's all sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really would. And we cut to inside an apartment in New York City. It's very lush. Yes. You, c- you can tell they're, I guess, well-traveled. Very well-traveled. They have a lot of um, objecta Objecta, yes. With lots of, like, African masks and random like you know Asian spears and stuff like that yeah and I, I think it's just to show that they're very well traveled yeah so, <laughs> so uh, her name is Beth uh, what was her last name yeah we introduced to uh, oh where is it uh, Beth and Carl, Carl Winters isn't Winters, it Winters yeah. Beth and Carl Winters we're introduced to so Beth is a journalist yeah, like an animal rights, a journalist going on like a animal rights kind of crusade. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't actually know what Carl is. Does he? No, they. I don't think they really say. Does he just stay at home cook? Like I'm not sure. He can't just stay at home and cook because he didn't. He he nearly burnt the burnt down. Yeah, he's not, he's not that good. Yeah, he's not that good. I don't no. think he just stays home. <laughs> I don't think we really know what he is. No, it's never mentioned. No, it's really not. Fair enough. And. And they're pretty <laughs> much just talking about how she has this trip to Australia yeah, to do this story. Go, she's got to go to Australia because she, um, she's gotten wind of reports of the amount of oh, I didn't Gamala. There's reports of um, multi, like excess, uh, what do you call it, cullings of um, of kangaroo and, and boar kangaroos, being yeah. used to just for pet food. Yeah, yeah, just for chum. For chum. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so she. So they have the conversation. They're very much in love, obviously. Mm. They've just been married. Very lovey-dovey. Yeah, very lovey-dovey. And he convinces her to go. Yeah, to she's go a bit... Uh, she's, she's unsure. She's uh, umming and ahhing about mm. travelling to Australia for this story. But he whips out a ring, and next thing you know, she's in Australia. Yep. Bingo. And right there. And we get to meet John Howard, the cameraman. Oh, y- young John Howard. Yeah, young John Howard. I was, I've, I've seen this movie a couple of times, but I always forget that he's in it. It's always a pleasant surprise. Yeah, like, it's so great. He's so young. Yeah. I just expect him to be walking around. Oh, what was it? All Saints. I just That's what yeah. I expect John yeah. Howard. All Saints. Because he, he probably looks like, probably like maybe mid-20s. Yeah. I mean, he's a big dude, so he, oh, yeah. he looks a bit older than that, but he'd probably be about mid-20s, wouldn't I'd he? I'd say so. Yeah, yeah, mid to late 20s, I reckon. But yeah, yeah he, he was usual John Howard. He's always good. Yeah, and... John Howard just plays John Howard, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So he was our cameraman. Yep. For 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 Beth and Beth and him got pretty chummy. And yeah, they got chummy pretty quickly too. Mm. She even let he even lends her his, his camera at one point. Yeah, let her go off and I I mentioned to you as while well, watching it. I love like when you know they go into the pub and you meet all the characters and, and all that. And it it was pretty much like um in a western where they open the saloon door. Yep. Like it, it was even a saloon door, like yeah. <laughs> a, a little bit more of a modern one. But yeah, the whole pub goes quiet and everybody turns around. You hear like, like the one the stool scuff as someone turns. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that classic, that classic kind of scene. And you know, there's that you that moment of her trying to get people to, you know, any kangaroo shooters want to help out and stuff, and everyone just starts laughing. Yeah. We cut to outside, and she's walking out with two schooners. Yeah, and she's just like, she just starts necking one. Oh, 
Oh, for an American, I'm impressed with her. She's you know well too familiar with a Scooby. Well, and I th- I think this is what it was supposed to be. That's the whole reason why yeah. their apartment is stocked with all these worldly things. So just just to show like how easily she can. Oh fit yeah, in. I can yeah. make a Scooby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then just and then they're like, yeah, right, 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 oh, American. And then she Two just glasses grabs of it. beer. Yeah, and then she just grabs it and just necks it, like Bob Hawke style, just gets straight it, down. Gets a and shot of like, oh, okay, you're one of us. Gets you're a one shot of, of us. Jerem Bowie in there and yeah. <laughs> necks it. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, sh- I, she wouldn't get respect for that. Oh, it's eighty four. No way, it's eighty four. That, yeah, that was a pretty popular one. That's but that's no, nah, d- uh, that's sacrilege, ruining a beer, man, ruining a school. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, where she is, true, true. Yeah, oh yeah, no, you could isn't the they wouldn't even have Jerem Bowie. At that, at yeah, that hotel. it's either they really wouldn't beer, yeah, or beer, beer or beer. <laughs> but this leads on to um, John Howard letting her go off into her own into the wilderness. Yes, and this is the first time we get to see Razorback kind of from afar. Oh yeah, we do. I yeah, about so you kind of, I guess you kind of get the scale of it. You don't really get to see the Razorback from afar all that often. They really didn't want to film that scene. Yeah, fuck, he doesn't put a put a cart in front of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a massive. Well, I I thought the cart might have been there, maybe because like there were like people underneath puppeting it kind of thing. Hey, could be. Yeah, like, it, and I was like, it makes sense, but I'm glad that was only a quick shot, like a quick couple of seconds. Yeah, but you love how you, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. But when we do see that scene with Jake, you know, it's through that we're seeing through the sniper scope, and he yeah, brisk pass, we see all of it. And he, Double and take. Yeah, Hang double on. take. It comes back. It's like, how the fuck did you miss that giant hulking thing? And what did he say? Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Man, he is a dramatic man. I love yeah. Jake. She's, you know, she's made the usual rookie error of every journalist going overseas and looking into something that just like controversial. Yeah, she's looking. She's into too, and she's a bit too gung ho without too really gung-ho. knowing the knowing what she's doing. And um, it it happens in every movie. Every kind of every one of these kind of movies. Yeah. And it's yeah, al- it's always a journalist. Just yeah, that's a good idea, um, journalist. Head first. Yeah, head straight to the town, that everyone knows you. You're not well, very hated. Go off into the outback by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Go, go to meet or uh, meet the Baker brothers. <laughs> so the Baker brothers. Yes. Benny and Dicko. Benny and Dicko. Oh my God, we we meet them briefly in the pub. Oh, in the courthouse in the beginning as in well. In the courthouse, mm. that's true. That's true. When that's when we meet them in the courthouse. Yeah, Dicko gives a statement. Yep, and then we see we see them in the pub, but yep. it's the first time we see them. The Baker brothers aren't well liked at all. Oh, in this they're town. disgusting. They are creatures. disgusting human beings. Oh, Dicko's covered in zits and he's yeah. got fucked up teeth and, and a big fish lip. Yeah, and and Benny's just got a fucked up eye. Yeah, he's got a fucked eye and, and just like. Oh man, it, they're disgusting. They're it's disgusting. So gross. No, they wear lots but of fur and yeah, yeah. So meet them at the. She's sticking her nose into the pet packing factory. Yeah, this is the yeah. the place that's causing all the controversy. Where, you know where there's reports of you know a lot mistreating of animals and all sorts of nasty shit, and we see the inside of it. Pretty disgusting. <laughs> she's popped a camera into the one of the windows and she's filming you see Benny chopping away at a kangaroo and Dick goes over to the side and he notices and jumps up and confronts her and all that and it's a kind of funny altercation like he grabs a camera and the, the lens comes off and she runs away and he's like oh you want this back <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah there's this whole thing she gets away and you know kind of flips on the bird and yeah starts this whole thing and that's what later on when he comes back but yeah, no, that those two are just nuts. So they, so they pretty much run a, a cannery. Yeah, a pet food cannery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So th- all they're doing is just literally hacking, and just chumming. Yeah, chumming. and canning, mm. and then canning. So what happens next mm. is she ends up running away and jumping in the car. Yeah, and as she's on her way back, their their Mad Max truck. That's just right. comes I out of if there was nowhere. Anything between that or not? Yeah, that's right. Comes it's, out of nowhere, and, and she's kind of freaked out. And, and there's and there's pr- it's pretty much a chase scene. Yeah, there's a good like you know Duke New- uh, what's it called Duke of the Hazards kind of jump from the from Dicko and Benny. You know, as you said, giant Mad Max truck with yeah. kangaroo carcasses hanging off the yeah. side and all yeah. that. And they have this huge car chase. They're banging up against each other and all that. And you made a good point. 
every kind of these car chases, why don't doesn't the person being chased just put the brakes on? Yeah, and they always seem to speed up. It's like that's yeah. more dangerous. Don't you're match ga- you're going to end up killing yourself, and they're they're not going to be you're liable. Doing the job for them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just just stop. Yeah, just and stop. She doesn't just he- heed to our warning as we scream at the screen. Yeah, <laughs> and she gets ridden off the road, and a um a street sign goes straight through the windshield. Mm. Doesn't affect her at all, and then somehow it's disappeared. Yeah, and then she pretty much hits a ditch kind of thing and smashes her her head against the yeah, steering like, wheel. There's a nice little. And she's like, still conscious. Oh like, yeah, she's a bit shook up, blood yeah. everywhere. But <sighs> yeah, and then the Baker boys turn up. Yeah, approach her. Um, is a pretty uncomfortable scene where, um, so she gets pulled out and, uh, Dicko is starting to undo his pants and oh, pretty un- pretty uncomfortable. How good was the bit the um when he comes up like she's crashed and she's in the car and he comes up and opens the door and he's like, are you okay? Uh, yeah, that's right? the first thing he says. Yeah, making he's like, any broken bones? And yeah. Like, no, no. Good. And then just pulls her out of the car. Yeah. So uh, th- that gets stopped pretty quickly. Be- Benny's kind of like, oh, I don't want nothing to do with this. Yeah, he's still got the spotty on him. He's still got the kangaroo spot on him. Yeah. Him. But there's a, a really unsettling line from Dicko as he's, you know, just about to get his pants down. Want to make love? Oh god, yeah, that oh. was just disgusting. Just, I uh, was just mm. praying for Razorback. Yeah, our prayers and were answered. Yeah, prayers were answered. In comes Razorback. Yep, Pre- just scares the scares the gentleman off. Oh yeah, they fuck right <laughs> off, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, gentlemen. they fuck right off. And um, <laughs> Beth, our our journalist, jumps oh, in her car. Poor Beth. Ah, uh, and the Razorback attacks and gnawing on it just yep. r- rips the door off yep rips the passenger side and door just off. starts munching away on her yeah grabs as her she, legs yeah as she's screaming um, we see her trying to crawl out through the broken windshield and she just gets pulled back in yep you can hear the crunching of the yeah, bones yep. and stuff and, and, and as she dies the, her hand runs down the center console of the car and just turns up the tones turns up the tones yep <laughs> goes hard on the it tones it was a nice like synth ding when it yep. happened as oh, well oh yeah it was great it was, it was great. perfect Actually, at this point, I should mention that I'm not sure if you would have noticed that the music mm. in this film is done by none other than Icehouse's Ivor Davies. Really? Yeah, I wasn't sure if you oh, noticed that at the no, start. Oh, no, I yeah. didn't. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that pretty explains great, isn't so it? Much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, speaking of music, mm. the first song we hear as well is uh, Reckless by Australian Crawl. Yeah. That's like, so the first like proper you know released song mm. was Reckless, and it was like, that was nice. Nice. That yeah. was a nice touch. Yeah, it in good there. touch. Yeah. So, our Beth dies. Yes. It's it's murdered dis- by Razorback. Devoured by Razorback. Devoured yeah. by Razorback. Yeah. There's nothing left of her. No, not a bit. There's nothing left of her. We see cuts to her next... Well, I think some time has passed. But I, I think a little, a little bit, bit of time. time uh, at least a little bit of time would have passed. And Jake reappears. Yes. You, know, the, you see the tow truck, bright red tow truck, and like an old... You know, Ford F fifty from the fifties or something like that pulls up and blokes rattling it on and acting like it's a normal thing for the, you know this car to be here, but like ignoring that the entire s- passenger side door is gone and this husk rips into it and all that. And yep. And but Jake's is looking at it and he he knows he's like it's back, it's back, it's back, it's back. And fuck, doesn't Jake look badass? Yeah, he's wearing his, you know, his stockman's, you know brown leather j- uh, jacket he's got a blue button he's dry as a bone and yet his big belt belt buckle and a shotgun so he's back looking off into the distance yeah. and that's when we're introduced to our, our lead to, our, to our lead which we didn't really well we, we did get introduced to him earlier but we it's kind of it's kind of strange how it's mm. just like okay here's here's the guy that's gonna you know yeah. come in and kick some ass and, it's and that's and that's Carl yeah Beth's husband Carl's so got word he, he comes looking for mm-hmm. Beth Trying to f- trying to find out what happens to her. Yep, he ends up in Gamala. He does. Yep, yep. Uh, which was you know Beth's first point of call. Yep, yep. And I guess the first person he she he speaks to is the owner of the pub. Yeah, he just he's very he's so trusting. They both are. It's so Aussie. They both are. It's just like, ah, uh, can I get a cab or is is there a car I could hire? And he's just like, cab hasn't been one around here since 1952, and he, he was, was lost. lost. Yeah. <laughs> And and he's just like, no, nah, that's all right. You take my car. Yeah. And he's just like, oh well, 
should I just leave my bags here? Yeah, that's all right. I'll, I'll look after it. it. I'll take care of it. I'll chuck them in your room. Yeah, see you when you get back. Fill her up when you get back. Yeah, fill her up when you get back. See you later. Just she, like, cool, thanks. She kicks out a little bit, so just watch the steering. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then as he pulls away, he's just like, left. And, and you he, could, he, he seems to <laughs> into the left Yeah, <laughs> from the right-hand side <laughs> to the left-hand side, of course. <laughs> Typical Canadians. Yeah, oh, that's right. He's actually Canadian. Aren't they American as well? Says uh, Benny. Aren't, aren't they the same? <laughs> what a gronk. He's he, he goes straight to Jake's place. Jake, because according to, um, on his end of it, of in America, it's kind of looking, because she had a little altercation with him, and she filmed, and she's tried to interview Jake, and from his background over there, they think that he's had something to do with her murder, or her disappearance. So he's like, I've got to go see, talk to this Jake bloke. Yeah. yeah. So, and th- that's what every, pretty much everybody in the town has been saying, and she was on her way to meet Jake, apparently. Yes. Yes. Which, I which, think so. yeah, they kind of, they kind of just, you know, waddle over really quickly. So yeah, our, our leads. Well, I guess yeah, two leads. Um, in a way, Carl and Carl and Jake. Yeah, they they meet up and have a bit of an awkward conversation. He he kind of half accuses Jake of yeah of doing away with. I did like how he he kind of approached it. It's not the usual kind of cliche like you killed my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. D- it was very measured, and mm. Jake treated him with a lot of respect. Yeah, as um, as Jake says, we we sh- you know we share a, s- a, a similar tragedy. In yeah, because because he believes that that was you know how she died as well via Razorback. Yeah, same as his. So grandson. it's like, well, we've both been killed. Like you know, we've both lost loved ones to Razorback. Mm. So we've got a common enemy here, kind of thing. Yeah, and then he, Jake decides to tell him about the Baker Boys. Yeah, he he doesn't he doesn't have the answers, but he knows the Baker boys have something to do with it. It's, they they know something. Yeah, they know something about his wife's disappearance. Mm. And so he listens to Jake, but in hindsight, it was a very bad decision. Very very, very st- yeah, very bad decision. Yeah, and he he goes and has a has a visit with Dicko and Benny. Yeah, so he heads heads to Pet Pack. Yes, heads to Pet Pack first. Yeah, th- he meets up with Benny and Dicko. They have a bit of a to and fro. There's not really much in it. He kind of goes, kind of. He doesn't go deep undercover. He kind of goes shallow undercover. Yeah, he just like kind of doesn't really give his name or anything. Like yeah, that. yeah. And then the next thing we know, he's going for a ride with them to. Oh yeah. Before that, we um, he gets to he gets to meet Dicko for the first time, and Dicko's in a working in a very interesting place. He's in the gore shoot. Oh yes! Oh wow! Yeah. I I, I, I kind of pushed that out of my mind. I I had to I had to bring this up because you just put a little smile on my face when it, we we walked around and all it's in this big concrete tube and there's just little bits of blood and guts coming out and you're like, what? What is that? It's it's red paint, isn't it? Nah, they're at a cannery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I I. Because for some reason I just didn't notice that they'd gone to the cannery and yeah. I actually thought that like somehow Dicko just stumbled up, uh, like upon this like <laughs> big vat of paint. Yeah. And, j- and he just, but he just wants the vat. Yeah, so he's it's just in there just, yeah, he's just trying to get rid of all the paint. <laughs> I honestly thought that's what it was because yeah. it was su- such bright red. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah like it probably was red it paint. It probably was red paint. Just chucked in with some, you know, some offal and shit like yeah, that. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's, like, that's exactly what I thought it was. Like, oh, you shoveling all the chunks and the guts out I and all that. I am an idiot. I am oh, an idiot. It was perfect. <laughs> that's someone who just doesn't want to, like, no, nah, it's not gore. That's yeah, paint. I, yeah, no. exactly. Yeah. No, I'm just pushing it out of my mind. Yeah, he's just pushing it out of my mind. You know, there's just two brothers trying to have a go of it. He's trying to like, restore the old pet they're packing. Just, <laughs> they're just two bloody Aussie battlers, mate. Yeah, that's just it. Giving it a red hot go. Uh, they like to drink a bit too much, so that's their problem. Yeah. Let's, so, let's, let's not talk about that, those guys. As, as, as and he's eating in the gore pit oh as well. Yeah, yeah, he's a charming piece. Mm. So they they head to I guess their abode. Yeah, the cave. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a very strange scene. I don't like. I guess it's really just to for Carl to ask questions and kind of yeah. get a bit of an idea. And he he knows they're they're bad guys, and then they just start getting pissed, and then they decide to go ruin. Go ruin. Yeah, like they end up. I'm pretty sure it's an o- like an abandoned opal mine. I think that's what all those yes. dugouts and yes, stuff yes, were. Yes, yes, yes. And um, he's not very good at playing the whole undercover thing. And no, yeah, that, and that, that, that's off. what I was saying. He's he's very shallow undercover. Yeah, it's he, very strange. He kind of yeah. let slip really quite early that like so about Beth Winter's disappearance and that he's spoken to Jake and straight away Benny's like, 
what are you fucking writing a book on this? Yeah. Not this Beth Winters woman? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just ridiculous. And it's like, yeah, you're not even really trying to be subtle. No, and by dick alerts off a gunshot near, um, near Carl. Yeah. And then they're like, all right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, and, and they, they, they just go ruining. They just start smashing beers. Yeah, smashing they're drinks and oh, Dicko, they're in the truck and it cuts a dick out and he's t- taking a swig out of his bottle of scotch and and it's just and that like the camera is just pulling away from his mouth yeah and then you notice that he's he's had a cigarette and he's been he's just shoved his cigarette right yeah. into the scotch yeah. bottle as well and it's soaking wet and it's soaking wet and then he just pulls it out of his mouth looks at it and just throws it out the window it's, <laughs> a weird little, like, ah. it's such a weird little moment yeah there's so many of those in this as well like near the start when they um. The camel grabs the coke can. Yeah, <laughs> it just grabs it and just starts pub. chewing on it. It's so fucking weird. It skulls it. So it's so weird. strange. <laughs> so the next thing we know, Carl is pissed out of his mm. mind. Yeah, it's it's really strange. Like, why would you get drunk with these two people who yeah. you think that who you think might have like had a I hand in murdering you're your in wife? You're in a foreign land and you're with the two people you think have just killed your wife. Yeah, it makes zero to no let's sense. Let, yeah, let your guard down. Have a drink with them. Yeah, and. So he he feels sick as a dog. Jumps out of the jumps mm. out of the truck. That's because they found a, they found a roof. Yeah, and they they put him on on spot spotlight duty. And um. Yeah, he um they spot it, and I can't remember if it was Dicko or Benny shot shot the roof, but it's not dead. And this sets Carl off. He he freaks out like, yeah. why are you not going to kill it? And as Benny explains, it's you can't kill it straight away, otherwise it's going to go stiff with rigor mortis. You've yeah. got to take it back, otherwise the meat's no good. Which I assume is true. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> Sounds it makes sense. I have no idea about meat processing. Yeah, me neither, really. Um, closest animal I've killed is a clay pigeon. So, <laughs> 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 um, and yeah, like um, I killed a friend's mouse once. Did you? That's for another time. <laughs> we'll save it for mouse hunt. Sizzle, man. <laughs> Forward sizzle. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he, this sets him off. He can't understand why they were just shot on it. And it's it's making weird noises and stuff like that. And he just chucks. He vomits all over Dicko's head. And yep. this pisses him off. He, and he's uh, trying to get the gun. And like, no, fuck off. You don't need the gun. And he manages to get Dicko's cleaver that he carries around with him. And he walks over to the room and finishes it off. Yeah. They're not too happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> Take him with them. Yep. They just throw a blanket at him mm-hmm. and be like, "Put up, put that on. You'll get cold. We'll be d- and don't go walk about. We'll be back in five or six hours." Yeah, yeah. And then, so Carl's getting cold. He's trying to work out where he's going to sleep, mm-hmm. and then he kind of feels if the roux has ev- any warmth. Yeah. So yeah. he decides to uh, spoon a roux. Spoon a roux. Spoon a roux. <laughs> and passes out with using the roux as warmth. Yeah, as a pillow. With yeah, with his blanket around him mm-hmm. and the rule is a pillow. It was And the most eighties oh dream oh sequence happens. God. Oh my goodness. It it looks like a short eighties music video. Oh it's it's perfect. ridiculous. We are actually we've got the you know, some background imagery of the movie playing and this scene just popped up. Oh, just let's running across the Let's white talk about sand. it. Yeah, let's let's oh. so it kinda starts with him tripping out. And thinking like there's Dicko and Benny walking around and then, you know, there's that kind of that's stilted where like the the last image is still there for a second yeah. as they move. And yeah. Yeah. Just that delay kind there of thing. the delay yeah. and then he thinks he sees balls and shit and he just goes he goes running and as you said, now he's in like white, you know, the salt lake kind of yeah. desert area. There's a painted crack in the earth to the right of yeah. you. Okay. And then some wooden horse emerges. Well, that wasn't wooden. I don't think though. I think that was genuine. Like, like I actually, I think it was bits of real bone and paper, uh, kind of paper mache. Yeah. But yeah, you got this. Yeah, that was a fucking weird moment. And then it's over, and he just wakes up. Yeah. Oh god, it's so and strange. He wakes up too. Razorback. Off in the distance, he hears a. He hears a. A oh grunt. No. Yeah, and he goes running. He and freaks he out. He freaks out and just starts running. And he he ends up uh, at the, uh, the pumping station. He ends up at this pumping station, and that's where this big windmill is. Uh, uh, the, the gross, muddy, you know, lake, lake thing. creek thing. Yeah, man-made lake and all that. And he goes and he um, I thought always liked this moment. He very smart. He climb, apart from 
it's not smart to climb a rusty old windmill, but he goes up and he gets to the top of the safety, but he knows he's about to pass out, so he wraps his belt around his arm and uh, attaches it to the to the windmill. Yeah, it's just to get to high ground. Yeah. So he's not going to get attacked by Razorback. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The next moment he wakes up. Yep, it's morning. It's hot morning. There's some small boars. Yeah, I don't hanging even around know the Razorbacks. Like they just no, well, they were definitely boars. They mm. were just oh yeah, small for sure. and weedy. And yeah, the, the the windmill is starting to give way and all that, and they're supposed to look like the boars are pushing up against it, but they they really didn't look interested, yeah, did they? No, nah, they couldn't have cared less. But you know, thanks to the magic of editing, yeah, the, <laughs> the windmill tip tops over. Yeah, crashes. I nearly said tipples. Tipples, yeah, tipples, yeah. tip top tipples. tipples over. <laughs> and yeah, he goes crashing into the gross muddy water and all that, and he thinks he's starting to panic. He thinks they're going to come, th- the boars are coming after him, and then realizes they can't swim, and he has a little laugh at that, and they all fuck off. But then the jump scare happens. Like the, the two jump scares in this movie. Oh, I didn't even jump. I oh yeah, jump. it's an attempt at a jump scare. Yeah. But this bloated dead pig just comes out of the water and yeah. starts freaking out like get it away yeah. get it away and yeah then he goes on another long trek ends up at Sarah's place he's he's all disorientated he's covered caked on with mud and he's all dirt. disoriented I do that a lot <laughs> he's <through> d- d- <laughs> disorientated disoriented <laughs> and yeah he, he stumbles into this you know nice white farmhouse nice garden white fence all that sort of stuff yeah. And young Sarah is having a shower, and uh, yeah, th- th- it's the ob- obligatory chest shot. Yeah, they had, to f- you know, I doubt they would have got approval from one of the backers if there wasn't a, yeah, a chest shot. Exactly. <laughs> um, she screams, and he just goes, ah, yeah, and <laughs> just passes out. He's I like love that. That, that was, a, that was, I think that was like really good acting. That actually, was great. The way that was a that. good moment. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't make it a sleazy scene or anything. Yeah, like that. yeah, it, like they used uh, it for I'll, a joke. I was just like, of course, like. Of course, he's going to walk up to what a creep. And it's just, I don't know, he's delusional. It all makes sense. They they have to put it in there somewhere. But yeah. they, they did it really well. Yeah. So she turns around. She just, <laughs> blood-curdling scream. And then he's just like, huh. Ah. <laughs> I loved it. I loved all it. All the energy leaving his body. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whoa, didn't expect to see this. just that tiny little, tiny little <laughs> yell. <laughs> oh, that was great. Then then he wakes up. Sarah's helping him out. Yeah. Making sure he's okay. The, the second jump scare happens. He's kind of, you think he's awa- awake from the dream, and he grabs Sarah, and she turns around. She's got the pig. She's face. got the pig face. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. And then he does actually wake up to Sarah. Yeah, and um, tells the story of what happened, talks about the Razorback, mm-hmm. and then that's f- then that's what piques her interest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And she goes and she goes and collects Jake. Yep, Jake comes back, lets him know, and Jake is on the case. Oh yeah, Jake's off. He's, he's going right straight on. for the Razorback. And he go, he, yeah, he ends up back at the. The pump station. Pump station, yeah. And we this the scene we were talking about the the scene you can tell they didn't really want to shoot. No, N- yeah. Where, where we see the lovely Razorback hiding behind the cart. Yeah, as as Jake's just unloading on him. Yeah, once he sees him, he says Jesus wept. He just unloads. Yeah, goes crazy. And yeah. Um, but you know, n- to no avail. Yeah, to Razorback no avail. hides too thick and yeah. it's too strong and too mad. Yeah, that it just doesn't care. And yeah, it, it basically leaves him alone. It just yeah. runs away. Yeah, all the pigs like run away. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, he heads back to Sarah's place. He lets Sarah know that he's like, "Nah, I'm gonna fuck this thing up." And I don't just, think he and came decides back. to go. Can't, that's where he. Oh, that's right. Yes, camping. he got any. Um, ah, during that moment, that I we forgot a key scene. He's once the, all the pigs are gone, he decides to search the area of the pump station. Yeah, he's you know picking through the shit and the mud and all that and he finds Beth's ring. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's when he, he goes back and to, to Sarah, Sarah and shows shows Carl that his wife's dead. Yeah, brings the bad news. Yeah. And then he decides to go camping to find Razorback. And that's it. To find Razorback. Um as he does that, once he makes it, um, Sarah protests. She protests and But he he does disappear. Um and then calls the calls the hotel. Well, to she to she puts in a report. She puts in a she puts in a report that you know um, she's looking for the constable. She's looking for the police officer and saying, "Can you go and swing by and check if Jake's all right?" Yeah, at this camp. Yeah, at yeah. this camp that he set up. But the publican, he you know really didn't want to help at all. No, nah, couldn't <laughs> care less. Couldn't care less. Like, no, nah, he's not in. Yep, whatever. So we cut to later that night. 
Mm. And we see Jake at his camp. Yep. Um, so as Sarah's called him to the pub, the old Baker boys sure. were there. Oh, yeah, they were listening. And uh, so they're like, well, Jake knows something. Yep. We're going to go fuck him up. Yeah, because she unfortunately drops that um, Jake thinks he knows something about uh, Brenda's disappearance. Beth, sorry, Beth, Beth's disappearance. Yeah. And that sets off the, set them off there. Yeah. So they, they head to see Jake at this camp mm-hmm. and they break his legs. Yeah. Dicko is got this mad look in his eye. And he's, yeah. He, as, as he said to um, Benny, um, I had, he's been spouting off too much. Yeah. You know, it's got to you know, put a fright in him. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to teach him a lesson. Teach him a lesson. Yeah. And then he goes out with the gun and I was like, I don't think you're gonna be able to teach a lesson by killing him. No. And then he sh- he fires off two shots and wakes him up and then just breaks his leg. Yeah, like he was he's trying to th- he was fucking with him, but then Benny appears after he you know detesting and you know not protesting against it and all that appears and knocks Jake out. Dick goes, "Why do you go and bloody do that for? Because now I can't talk to him. He's now he's not gonna feel it." And he pulls out his hatchet. And yeah, as you said, wails on his legs. Uh, I really hated this. This happened in this scene. Like, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. And then you you have um, you have Benny sitting in the in the in the truck while Dicko's just going crazy. Over yeah, it. yeah, and yeah. he doesn't want any part of it. Yeah, he's. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. There's no like redemption for Benny <laughs> for Benny at all. No, because he, he he's still a piece of shit, but he just won't hurt people. Yeah, but like, he's an enabler too. Yeah, he's, he's totally just like, well, if you're gonna bloody do, do it, it, hurry do up. It. Yeah, get mm. it done. Get it done. So yeah, yeah he's so a worm. the next thing we know, it's the next morning, and and Jake wakes up, and <laughs> it's another example of just the sound affected screams. Mm. Like there's just so much delay and reverb on yeah, it. Yeah, like, they're it's massive. Just so fucking stupid, but they do it every single time. Yeah, it's total music video no. stuff. Total music video stuff. He crawls into a little shed to try and get some shelter. Yeah, he realizes get like away from some of the boars that are around. Like because they've killed most of his dogs except for one. Um the, the smell of his the blood his bloody legs and the smell of the dead dogs is bringing in all the razorbacks. So yeah. he has to as you said get to the little shed. Yeah. Crawls through all the pe- the shit and the mud and all that and scares off a couple of them with some bones and stuff and eventually gets into the shed. Yeah. Fucks up our mate Jake. Kills him. Yeah, Razorback. He makes his appearance. Poor bastard. Oh, fuck. That would have been terrifying. Yeah. Well, all all he did anything. was sitting in the shed and just the Razorback just rips it apart and just fucks him yeah, up. Smashes. Doesn't even use the door. Just smashes yeah. through the side of yeah. it. All the the corrugated steel is just going everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Then we see Sarah and Sarah and Carl. Yep. She's, she's dropped him off at the bus stop. Mm-hmm. And then as she's driving away, she... She spots one of the dead dogs. Yeah, mm. yeah. She spots the the last the last alive one. Yeah, who mm. Jake sends off to go get help. And the Baker boys decide and the to Baker hit. Boys decide <laughs> to kill it. Oh, 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 oh scumbag! Scum she sees the dead dog and finds out something's wrong. Right. Goes like an egg. Sorry, go, goes and picks up Carl. Carl, yeah. And and they go and find Jake. Yeah, they end up back at the pump station they where he was camping. They find him in the shed. Yep. Dead bloodied and destroyed this Sarah can't handle it she's off she's, she's off she's off to get a posse yeah. together to get a get a mob get a mob together yeah. kill this pig yeah and Carl's like fuck that I'm going straight well, to the source well that's it he was going to she yells out follow me in Jake's follow truck me. and he's about to you sorry he's about to but then he notices these slits in the in the dirt and recognises that it's fucking um Dicko's cleaver yeah so he's off he's straight to the Baker boys Opal Farm. Yeah. <laughs> Opal Cave. Uh, yeah. Opal Mine. Opal Mine. That's yeah. the word. Opal Farm. Yeah, he finds he finds Benny there. He there's they have a jump at the front of like the, to like get into their place. And so he just drives straight here yeah. over the jump and into the house. Like and Benny just goes, You are supposed to use the brakes before you get <laughs> before you hit that hit the place. Pants halfway down, toilet paper in his hand. Yeah. Like yeah. And, and then there's an altercation obviously and mm-hmm. Carl gets up on him. Yeah, there's a chase through the you know all the divots caused by the opal mine, and Benny gets the yeah he gets the upper hand on him because he's hiding in one of the the mine shafts. Yeah, yeah, just holding onto the bucket. This 
ends up being his worst choice yet. Yeah. As Carl now <laughs> walks up to him and lets him down a little bit. Yeah. Starts kicking dirt and pebbles and shit like that. Working out where Dicko is. Yeah, and screaming. What happened? What happened to my wife? Yeah, letting him know who he is. He, and get, all he that. gets enough information out of Benny, mm-hmm. and then just leaves him there. Yep. And as he leaves, you just see the the cog. Yeah, the thing the just starts just spinning. Yeah, you hear and him scream and like that that whir- like that high pitched whirl of like yeah. the, the rope hitting. So good, so uh, good. He deserved that. Yeah, uh, he would have landed on his ass on a bucket. Yeah. Oh. Goodbye, Spine. Yep. See you later. See, see you later, later. Benny. Next thing we see is Sarah's got her posse together. Yep. Everybody's jumped in the cars. Mm. Then there's the publican misses his ride. Yeah, everyone fucks off without him. Then you see him burst into s- into frame on the back of a camel. On the camel. <laughs> the <laughs> Riding into camel. battle on a camel. So good. So great. <laughs> and yeah, they they all arrived. They're there. It was felt like a, a Western comedy or something like that. Yeah, Every rifle yeah. comes across. There's a tiny pig there. Yeah. She's she's been tracking the wrong one, yeah. and that everyone fucks off. Yeah. No one believes her again after this. And yeah. This is and then after this, mm. this is where we see Carl go after Dicko. Yeah, he's so after he the goes to the cannery. Mm-hmm. Goes to Pet Pack, and yeah, there's a weird chase scene. It was where, a weird where, chase. Where Dicko's doing pirouettes as he runs. Yeah, he likes chucking in a, a good little, a good little spin twist. And yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty magical, actually. He 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 does. He definitely has the fashion for it, like oh the yeah. nice long coats for it. Yeah, he made like this is huge fur coat with like rue tails and stuff like yeah. that. And, um, but yeah, there's this. It, from knowing, from watching the, the behind the scenes, knowing that like they didn't have an ending when they made this movie, yeah. or when they wrote and they were filming, so they had to, they couldn't quite figure it out, and they. Ha- from shots like the ones we were talking about, Russell had pretty much blown <laughs> a huge chunk of the budget. Yeah. So like, what the hell are we gonna do for the final scene? And that's why I was at the cannery for so long. There was so many of those long shots yeah. of just nothingness. Yeah, and that that chase went on for way too long. Yeah, it was un- yeah. like so many missed opportunities yeah. to shoot him and yeah. stuff like and that. Then, and then of course in the end he's he's following him in the truck. Mm. Dicko ends up falling over. He points a gun at him. And he's, he's like, hey, look, I'm a kangaroo. Yeah. Like, in the spotlight. And, it's like, and he's like, oh, yeah, I knew you had a good sense of humor. Yeah. And Carl just, like, the smile just cut goes off his face. Yeah, he holds and the gun properly now. Yeah, yeah, and then you just hear Razor back. Yeah, and I, I love Dicko's response. Wow! Yeah. And he just piss bolts. He's yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, and he's gone. And then we, do we, don't, we don't see him die, do we? I can't remember. No, it's implied. We do it's see implied, isn't it? He, he ends up in, like, a little canyon or something, a little... Crevice. Oh, that's no, of course. Yeah, of course. That that chase through the crevice scene that was re- unnecessarily long See, as well. And I think that was because you can tell that's a set. Like yeah. You can tell that's you know dirt on yeah hot, like on flooring and all yeah. that. And I the it must have been so hard working with Razorback, like the actual p- the, yeah the, the, the actual p- giant the actual prop. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like um, Bruce on Jaws. Yeah. Was, um, Spielberg hated him because he just wouldn't. W- it wouldn't work yeah. most of the time. I think that was the same thing with this. It was yeah, just like that does not surprise me. No, I think for those scenes when it's running through houses and stuff like that, I think it was genuinely on a hoisted on a pole, on yeah. like a huge sort of like dolly with like a truck pushing it through yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty much which is why we only ever see the head. Yeah, like yeah. side on, lots of movement, things yeah. breaking inside, and it manages to chase Dicko into this crevice and we hear him sc- let out a really blood curling scream and a lot of the kills and stuff are implied you yeah. never really see anyone getting like a front like a you know right on stabbed or like you know getting hurt there's only just a few close ups of like the teeth jumping into you yeah. know biting into her leg or something like yeah. that yeah so and then we're back at the cannery to see Carl yep he jumps back in the car and he drives flips it as he <laughs> as yeah. he gets to the cannery yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the it's the standoff with Razorback. Yeah, um, Sarah turns up. Um, she I, yeah, she gets chased, yeah, which is great. Oh, no, that's this right. This yeah, great yeah, yeah, moment yeah. where he try he's pretty much just trying to trying to distract it and bring the razor back towards him so it doesn't attack Sarah. And he's like, "Come here, come on, you big son of a bitch!" Oh no, shit! And it just doesn't work. Yeah, he starts <laughs> to move around the car. Yeah, and he's he's around. Like, no, come on, bring it, bring it. And the Razorback's like, no, nah, fuck it, I'm going for Sarah. Yeah, yeah she's great. She's better. You're, yeah. you're too quick, mate. Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> oh, it's so perfect, so perfect. And yeah, same thing. This goes on for ages. Mm-hmm. For some reason, like Sarah gets so Sarah gets chased. He follows in, 
and then she just kind of disappears in the mist. Yeah, and then there's this long moment of him just wandering around, like looking, searching, and and then it pretty much just sneaks up behind him. Yeah, like this giant fucking hulking thing just sneaks up behind yeah, him. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> and then so there's a n- there's more chasing, mm-hmm. and then he finds himself on top of the conveyor belt. Oh, the just before this, though, like it, it's pinned him, but he's managed to get a bar, like a m- piece of metal, yeah, and. Just It goes straight through it, through it, yeah, through its and neck, and then neck. just pretty much just pushes straight through it, and then it kind of stops him for a second because Carl can get out and like wipe his yeah, face he, for a he second. Gently, it's like really weird. You can tell he wasn't really holding onto that bar too well. He just kind of okay, I'm gonna slide yeah, out and then here. just kind of slides out. Yeah. It's really strange, <laughs> really strange. So then he finds himself on top of the conveyor belt. Yeah. Um, Razorback just goes straight into the. I guess what would you call it? The furnace for it? No, the, the, the I don't pressure. know if it was a furnace, but it, it, it but was. But it, it had some kind of pressure thing like, or yeah, some kind of temperature it thing. It was kind of like a drain, gauge. but with a huge. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the big boiler. Yeah, yeah. it was a boiler, wasn't it? Yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm thinking the wrong thing. Yeah, the big boiler starts to go off because yeah. you know all the carnage just it's rocket knocking shit over. And yeah, all that. yeah. So the Razorback goes kind of straight through it and like turns on the electricity. Mm. So he's atop the conveyor belt mm. and Razorback's standing there and he's just trying to taunt it like come on you know what you suck and you stink yeah it's like yeah good one man yeah awesome and then yeah. he's like he's like come on you want to pay this yeah you can start with my ass yeah come on do it let's do this it's and that sets like, him up and that's what sets him up yeah. like he turns and shows him his ass and raises back's like nah nah fuck nah, that fuck that like nah. it just goes and just goes nuts and that's when he smashes into the like well yeah like he's trying to get him onto the conveyor belt because at the end of it is this like Drain for all the offal and all the leftover bits oh, well with a it's, huge it, blade. It, yeah, it's the blade. Is, mm. It's pretty much the chummer. Yeah, it's the, the thing chummer. that just breaks it all down yeah. into just fucking and meat mountain. We don't actually get to see him actually fall into it because that would have cost money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they wouldn't have been able to so, do that. Yeah, so he taunts him onto the conveyor belt. And there's as a bit of a slow mo jump onto one of the root carcasses hanging over, and then you just it kind of baits back. him. Yeah, you swing him back, and it cuts back, and you just see the head of. Yeah, before the Razorback heading popping out. And well, it's no, but chummed. that's the other thing. But you don't see it fall in. That's it. You, you just see him hanging on the carcass. Then you see him getting off the carcass, and he turns around, and then you see the, then you see Razorback going in. Yeah, like yeah. so you don't even see. So he's and like hanging there, and you're like, and you're like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And then he just gets off the roof, and there's the Razorback just yeah. getting <laughs> getting jumped up. Lots of like quick cuts to like so random strange. shit, and it it's just so doesn't. Weird. They cut into his face, a close-up of his face, like three or four times. Say so with the boiler, when it, when it happened, yeah. it was like, bang, bang, bang. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Real quick cuts. And so that's the end of, of much, our monster. Yeah, like he's... And then he he, he finds... Oh, he, tur- he turns off the boiler. And I'm like, what are you doing? Just run, man. Yeah, I'm like, it's oh, about wait, to explode. Wait, he hasn't found Sarah yet. Yeah. It, yeah, it's yeah. about to explode. And he runs up and he's trying to do the dials. And you see him jump onto the railing and... Grab the plank, yeah, and just smack, smack it, yeah, because he learned it. He learned it from the Baker Boys yeah. last time when when he was just hanging out with them, yeah, at oh the cannery, God, idiot, yeah. <laughs> and then so he finds Sarah. She's somehow tied up. It's that's what I was thinking at one point when Razorback runs off and mm. starts chasing Sarah. I honestly thought it was going to be like, oh, we're going to have like a King Kong moment. <laughs> like it's like Razorback is somehow climbs to the top of the cannery. He's just like swatting like giant like birds out of the yeah. air like, <laughs> I'm, ju- I'm just thinking scale wise you know just yeah, scale yeah, scale wise. Like, well, we but then but then when we when we do find sarah she somehow is tied up yeah like, she's hanging she's, from the roof she's hanging chains. upside down from these chains Fuck and it's Razorbacks like, was she just running from razorback and then somehow got tangled in these chains like i kind of i picture it like you know He's Carl's dealing with Razorback, but she's still running on the top. Like, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> and then she's just <laughs> eating shit. I, I was gonna, I was gonna s- no, it's almost like she just runs into the chains like it's a cobweb, and she's like, oh, and she just over the side, gets then just gets tangled up in it, and then she's hanging upside down, passes out. That'd be funny. His whole like he's that, that somber moment as he's walking through looking for her, and just her running at the top. That'd be yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And then. She slowly wakes up, and that's the end of the movie. Yeah, they like have a stare at each other, and it's damn near high five freeze frame. Yeah, and then credits. Yeah, that's Razor Back. What a fucking Whoa. weird, enjoyable movie. Like, I remember hearing about this as a kid. This was always a joke. My parents, like a joke movie, my parents talked about, like, oh, you gotta watch Razor Back. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm so glad this d- didn't disappoint. Yeah, yeah, it's this was a great a movie. movie. I really enjoyed this. It's it's definitely a movie. It's, it's just definitely a movie. It is. It's popcorn. You get a yeah. couple of mates and 
yeah have a couple of beers and watch Razorback yeah. you're gonna have a good time yeah. <laughs> so so what do you reckon of this movie do you enjoy it uh, you're a, you're a, you're, would you say you're a fan I'm a fan of Razorback yeah okay. I'm a fan from day w- like the second I first watched it I'm a fan yeah okay <laughs> yeah Every, like, and I said when I first watched like even though we knocked on like the style of the filming it's a well shot movie it is yeah there are s- there are some really good shots in, in comparison it. to a lot of other you know Australian horror movies in that time yeah it some of the like practical effects not so much but it's filmed very interesting it is very video clippy like yeah, it's an interesting looking film yeah a lot of the shots are very they're very sweeping um from very very low shots too it's al- it's almost a bit wanky at times and it's yeah, a, in it's, a good it's way it's kind of like trying to be arty as well yeah. when, when it's like this kind of sh- like schlocky horror movie it, it that's yeah. it it's a schlock but yeah shot interesting yeah it yeah. just it just fascinates me yeah i find it odd i've got to always watch it yeah <laughs> so yeah no i'd um i recommend this th- uh i recommend this movie to the person who i know will like it because it's a niche S- most people won't like this movie yeah. Yeah. they'll you know they'll enjoy it for the moments when the razorback rips through the house and all that sort of stuff and dicko's weirdness yeah but those moments of just quiet time between people will people will just lose interest i reckon yeah that's fair yeah but still fun yeah cool well uh we should wrap this up yeah um what are we doing next chris next oh so we are keeping with the theme of kind of creature feature but we're moving on to a piece by one of my favorite directors toby hooper we're not watching texas chainsaw massacre we are watching eaten alive okay Oh my god, this is just an oddity. I love this movie. All right. It's not good, It's, but it's so good. <laughs> right. well, we've got something to look forward to yeah, next week. So look forward to a bit of Eden Alive. Awesome. Sweet. Toby Hooper. Oh. I haven't seen, I don't think, no, I've, I've seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. But I haven't seen anything else. Did, so. Oh, you've seen Poltergeist? No. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah you've only seen, you've seen nothing then. Yeah. Fine. You know I'm a noob. Yeah, it's true. Absolute noob. You're the expert. I'm oh, the noob. man. Get ready to see That's what makes this work. Get ready for some Toby. All right. Sweet as. All right. Well, thanks, Heath, Chris. Thanks for showing me Razorback. Oh, my pleasure. I enjoy it. Now I can um, I can try and recommend that to other people. Give it a go. So <laughs> see how we go. I'm not sure if I can sell it as well as you sold it to me. But <laughs> we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. All right. All right. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Rest in horror.